All right, so it's been around two weeks since I last made any kind of update on my projects, on my RC cars. And the main reason really has just been because I've been waiting for stuff to arrive. So obviously I had to order some parts from abroad, so things are a bit delayed and there's a lot going on. But I've now received 90% of the parts. The only things that I'm missing are the ESCs and the battery. Arguably two of the most important components, and I won't get very far without them. But they should arrive in the next two weeks, so I'm excited for that. So on the back of the last project, this is version one. And the main goal of it really was to just gain experience designing something like this. You know, I've never designed anything in CAD quite like this before. This turned out really well, to be honest, for a first attempt. There's a lot wrong with it which I plan to take forward and correct in version two. I'm trying to be really ambitious with version two and I'm trying to take a very different approach to most people in the RC community. I, I kind of want to look at this as a miniature electric vehicle as opposed to just a generic RC car that you have fun with. I, I'm looking at it more as a computer system on a vehicle. So there's a lot I want to do and there's a lot of software based approaches that I want to apply to a lot of common problems with RC cars. But yeah, it should be fun. Uh, it's gonna be interesting for sure, I'm gonna learn a lot. Hopefully I can convey that across in the videos and also you'll be able to learn a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run you through some of the parts that have arrived and I'm gonna show you a little bit of CAD that I've worked on just again, the sort of ball rolling in terms of design. So let's get straight into it. These are the wheels, they finally arrived and I'm really, really happy with them. So you can see here, they've got a really nice tread and the actual design of them is quite nice as well. So you probably recognize these from my Fusion 360 tutorial that I did a few weeks ago. I've now adjusted all those parameters to match these now that they've arrived. And I'm really pleased with how it turned out. You can see, you know, these are nice and flexible. You can see there's a lot of give in them. And that's exactly what I want for this version of the car. Um, you, there's actually foam in there, but you can hear the air escaping when I do that. And we should be able to, you know, travel over quite uneven ground and some reasonable obstacles, right? So this combined with the shocks should be really, really good. This is one of the wheels hooked up to the universal joints. And you can see that uh, hooks into there really nicely. And you can see how it's gonna work, right? So we've got that up and down motion that the shocks will give us. And we're also gonna be able to steer the wheels like this, which is why you need to use a universal joint. They're really awesome. A lot of people also just use a ball joint, which is pretty much the same thing. But uh, you can see I've coupled that onto there just using a normal um, a nut with a thread. And a little tip for these is use nylock nuts because a really common problem that people will run into is uh, the nuts coming undone obviously when the wheel is turning. So what you can do is you can buy special threaded nuts um, so you can get counterclockwise thread for example. So if your wheel's rotating uh, counterclockwise like this you'd want to get a clockwise thread so that it's not going to come undone or it's less likely to come undone. And the nylock nut then also just gives you that extra security that it's really tight. But yeah, you can see I've just hooked that up in there with a hex um, coupler. Really nothing special. You can buy them on eBay and stuff like that. Um, but there's a little gap there. I don't know if you can see it, but that's going to be where I hook up to the suspension. I'm going to be able to steer, obviously, and I'm going to put a uh, bearing on there as well so that we've got as little friction as possible for the wheels to turn. Uh, this should come together really nicely. And I've started modeling a lot of this stuff in CAD, which I'll show you later on. So these are the motors I'm going for, and you probably recognize these. They're actually drone racing motors. So these are Race Star Fire Edition 2500 KVs, and they're really, really fast. So because of the configuration that I'm going for, I obviously want four independently driven wheels, so it's gonna be four wheel drive. Um, I've not seen anybody try anything like this on an RC car. I'm essentially trying to create a drone on wheels. Now, one of the challenges is obviously the speed. So these are really, really quick. So I'm hoping I can control the speed quite effectively using software, using um, a PID control system. But I'm also hoping that these can generate enough torque. That may be a problem. Um, the car's gonna be really, really light anyway. And I'm gonna have an ESC for each of these. So it might be okay. I'll see how it goes, but if I need to make any changes, that's not a problem. But yeah, it should be really experimental and the results should be interesting. So obviously these are brushless motors. They're three phase. And you can see this one here, I've actually got a coupler hooked up to it. So this is a sort of uh, dog bone cup, is what I like to call it. But what it's actually for 
is if I show you one of these, you can see there's a sort of dog bone um, attachment on here. Uh, this is known as a dog bone coupling because what you do is you attach that into here like that and that allows you to um, couple with the wheel not necessarily um, in a parallel way right so I can actually use this at an angle like this you can see I'm still able to turn and even if I want to steer the wheel combining the dog bone coupling with the universal joint really gives you a lot of movement in there so I'm hoping to sort of experiment with that a bit and hopefully achieve some good results this right here is the power distribution board and it's simple how it works basically that goes in there and this is where you hook up your battery so my lipo is going to connect to this and you see these a lot on drones but because of the approach I'm taking you know with the four motors uh, what I'm doing is I've got four separate ESCs that I'm going to hook up to each of the motors and it's essentially going to be like a drone on wheels but I'm going to be able to control the speed hopefully by using a control system using software so it's going to be quite different to what you'll see on a regular RC car but that's kind of why, why I like it it's quite experimental and it's either going to be really awesome or it's going to completely suck so we'll see how it goes so these are obviously the shocks and I'm really really pleased with these they're such high quality shocks and if I show you one of them up close as you can see here there's a nice bit of spring action there and they're not too um, soft but they're not too stiff either they're sort of somewhere in the middle which is what I want uh, I may change them out in the future because I've not really worked with these before but I think they're going to be good just for my version 2 maybe on my version 3 or later I can actually you know change them out to what might be more suitable but for now they're going to be great and I can't wait to start using them one other thing I did buy as well was obviously a proper lipo charger this thing's supposed to be really good uh, you've got to be careful with lipo batteries so it's good to do them properly and uh, this thing discharges and charges so it should be great uh, I'll do I'll probably do some kind of tutorial about it if you're interested but yeah that's one other thing so that's basically everything that's arrived to date and you can see I'm keeping it all here in a nice little storage box but you know over time now as the CAD model progresses I can start printing different parts of it and just start putting it all together so what I'll do now is I'll show you the CAD and just show you where I'm at so you can see here this is where I'm at so far um, I haven't done an awful lot but as I said I've been waiting for the stuff to come in and the main focus has just been modeling each of these parts and you probably recognize a few of them so it, this is just an individual wheel you probably saw my tutorial on this uh, where I designed it from scratch took around two hours something like that um, but yeah that was fun to design I also did the shocks you probably saw this on my Instagram as well this wasn't too bad to design actually for something that looks quite complicated it wasn't too bad it was quite straightforward uh, I also did the motors as well and you can see I can move all that and I also modeled the universal joint that was a real challenge to be honest um, just getting all those joints working properly took a lot of patience and a lot of trial and error but it worked in the end I've been able to use that in my final design gear so this one really has just been about experimentation and trying to just figure out how I'm, how I'm going to bring all these things together and roughly the sort of dimensions of it as you can see I've got one of the shocks here just trying to sort of figure out positioning you know whether I should place them um, in front of the motors or behind the motors and where I should put the actual shock plate that these mount to so this is obviously just the rear, rear plate um, and I don't think it'll take too long really because the front of the car is essentially just going to be a duplication of this part obviously you've got the steering at the front and attaching the servo and stuff like that that shouldn't be too hard I've already kind of planned out what I'm going to do there and other than that it's just going to be the sort of main body piece which I've actually kind of got there it's just, you know it's just a square at the minute um, but I can shape that that's going to be half of it so you can kind of see the size of it. it's going to be another half and the front plate as well so it's going to be a reasonably sized car I want to keep the weight down as much as possible which is something that I didn't think about with the previous car but I think that's important especially not knowing how much torque these motors can generate you want to keep the weight right down and that's also another reason why I wanted to use the bearings because you're just reducing that friction and making it easier to get over that initial sort of store torque alright so that's where I'm at 
and I'm really excited to get this thing built and to start posting these update videos. So if you want to stay up to date, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I upload videos. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you on the next video.